hard work that indigenous people have been doing for decades and decades is really coming to a head here and that's not going to happen again you know and if the indigenous leadership falls short of the mark and just go in for jobs and business opportunities and some revenue sharing during this you know, this time and don't, and don't change the fundamental nature of this by getting indigenous people's sovereignty and you know we you know you'll miss that opportunity for forever, you know, so I think in that sense it's, it's really critical uh, where, where we're at right now. Everything comes from the land regardless uh, whether you're native or non-native. It all comes from the land. The Indian reserves is 0.2% that we got. That's why we're poor. You know, the, the non-natives got 99.8. That's how come they're rich, you know. And that is a human rights violation in itself, you know, because that kind of systemic denial of our property rights uh, generates generation after generation of impoverishment. If you want a solution to impoverishment, there has to be a real fundamental land reform in this country. We, we have to have a land base that we that can support our language, our culture, and make us self-sufficient. The poor people in this country, indigenous people, have been made poor because of the system, the colonial system that has been imposed on our land. I think all of you know that with our elders, they say that everything comes from, comes from the land. I think one of the things you, you have to do is, is build a very strong international component in your struggle. And you have to bring this land issue to all the different United Nations human rights body. Going to Ottawa is a waste of time, I think. You know, because you're talking to the guy that stole the land. If he wanted to give it back, he'd have gave it back. You know, like, you have to quit crying on the shoulder of the guy that stole the land. The whole issue of the colonial doctrines of discovery, the whole issue of, uh, of oppression in terms of using the Royal Canadian Mount Police to arrest people, put them in jail. All those things are symptoms of all other struggles that have been going on. Like when you when you put the list of the defenders together, there's a list of uh, thousands of uh, in, indigenous people who have been put in prison at different times on different struggles from coast to coast because we're fighting the same struggle our elders fought way back in the early, in the late 1800s and that's it's the same thing, you know, we haven't really changed that. So, no, they're all, I think, the, every new struggle uh, is really just a, a, a new uh, addition to, to, to a very long list of, of struggles and I think the freedom is at the end, uh, but I think what I, I say right now is we can see the light, a bit of the light at the end of the tunnel, I think, uh, nowadays.